always say that we live in a society like here, for example. I is an expression we know very well, you know, looking after number one. But what about the community at large? We need a concept of helping one another through physical means and opening our doors to those who need it the most. And this should play an integral role in building our community and especially building up our iman. Fostering is something we hear about but not necessarily understand what it actually entails or even how to go about it. Statistically, every year, over 58,000 children are looked after in foster care and over 10,000 of these are from Muslim and ethnic minority communities. There are two problems social services departments generally face and they are firstly a shortage of foster carers and secondly within that there's a shortage of finding suitable families for children from ethnic backgrounds. I'd like to pose the question how does fostering fit into Islamic ethos and why is there a need to foster, Liz? Well, I think this is an area where there has historically been a lot of confusion. Um, so inshallah we can use this opportunity today to clear up some of that confusion because uh, fostering and adoption is so important in Islam. Um, we all know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he actually lost his father even before he was born. Um, and then by the time he was eight years old, he'd also lost his mother and his grandfather and was subsequently raised by his uncle, Abu Talib. Um, in Islam, we call um, adoption kafala. Kafala, am yeah. I saying that right? Yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> um, which literally means sponsorship, mm. um, but it comes from the root word meaning to feed. Mm -hmm. So this is best translated as foster caring. Mm. Um, and I think we can also um, go back to the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he, he tells us that he's left us two things, the Quran and the, the Sunnah sure. for us to follow. And if we, if we live by these things and we will never go astray and yes. you know adoption and looking after the orphan child it is so important in both of those areas that's why I'd like to stress that there is a shortage of Muslim foster carers in the UK and as Liz said the Prophet peace be upon him you know was raised by his uncle mashallah but not all other Muslim children and out there have other members of their family mm. to help look after them so hence why it's so important that we bring down like you know the percentage of um, unfostered Muslim children mm. In the UK. Yeah, because if, if we're, as an Ummah, we're a family, so we should be there for a family. Yeah. But, um, Auntie, what are the benefits of fostering? You know, what, what rewards would you say that you gain from fostering? Yeah. I think the benefit is, you know, when you see a smile on a little child, you know, that's, a, that's the biggest reward mm -hmm. you could ask, you know, yeah. and make these children, you know, up to a good citizen. Yeah. That, that, that's a reward for everyone. Yeah. So that's what is fostering is yeah, all yeah. about. I can tell. I mean, alhamdulillah, yeah. like a child's smile does go a yeah. long way. Yeah. Liz, what rights do the foster children actually have? Um, well, the uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, he was obviously um, an orphan, so that he was in a position whereby he could identify with, with the needs of the orphan child. And um, th there's lots of um, information in the Hadith and in the Quran um, which tells us about how we should treat children and specifically orphan yeah. children yeah. Um, and that you know there are special rules to be taken into consideration there is a hadith where the prophet peace be upon him says the home wherein the orphan is ill-treated is the worst home on earth you know subhanallah so this has actually been specifically mentioned mm. mashallah so you can see that there's great great importance exactly in that. that it does carry a huge amount of weight Definitely. Um, but we do have to also be mindful um, about how we actually treat them um, and and that it's actually complying with the rules yes. um, that, that are laid out in the quran um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 33, chapters 4 to 5, Nor has he made your adopted sons your biological sons, such is only your manner of speech by your mouths. But Allah tells you the truth, and he shows you the right way. Call them by the names of their fathers. That is the juster in the sight of Allah. But if you not know their fathers' names, you may call them your brothers in faith or your trustees. But there is no blame if you make a mistake therein. What is counted is the intention in your hearts and Allah is oft returning most merciful so you know by that yeah. we can see how careful we have to be exactly inshallah. I mean auntie what about fostering non-muslims I think it uh, doesn't matter if it's non-muslim or Muslim mm. they have equal right yeah. so they should be treated in equal basis yeah. How, how you normally treat your it, it, own... Any other child, yeah. Every child has yes. the right to yes. be treated the same. How about you, Halima? Well, I would say that all children are actually Muslims and Islam doesn't discriminate against mm. non-Muslim children. Mm. You know, um, 
I'm going to go back to a hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, you know, um, I am the person that looks after an orphan and provides for him. He and I will be like this in paradise. So that just answers the question there. You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> then, and the, that hadith does not mention, like, you know, if it's a Muslim child, non-Muslim yeah, child, exactly. any orphan. Um, you know, the criteria is that were mentioned in close up, you know, that you have to be a certain age, etc., etc. But what if you don't have the financial means, you know, to bring another member into the family, Halima? Well, um, I have a friend of mine and she was widowed and she desperately wanted to um, have a child or to adopt or foster. Okay, but she thought that she wouldn't be able to cope with just only one um, income. So she done like a lot of research and went to the governments and, you know, done a lot of Googling. And um, she realized that, you know, the government do provide an allowance to make sure that the child yes. is looked after comfortably, yeah. you know, so, um, you know, if you're un if you're a bit confused or anything like that, and you think that you know maybe you won't be able to afford it, there is research sources yeah. out there. It's just it, you you are provided that help, so you do get money to look after the child as well as yourself, Auntie. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Of course. Okay. Yes. Um, what are the difficult challenges faced when it does come to fostering a child? I think the biggest challenge is, is the family mm. and the other people. But uh, uh, I think I won't call it challenge. That, uh, they have right to, uh, to make sure, you know, their children, little one or big one, uh, to be treated in mm. a respectful and caring manner. Yeah, That's definitely. Yeah. They should be deserved that. Yes. Halima? Well, I'd say that having a child, I can speak from advice, uh, well, mm -hmm. from my own um, Experience. Experience, yes. yeah. It's not easy and um, fostering a child must be even harder mm -hmm. as they're coming along with maybe other problems um, from, you know, in their past. That's true, you don't know the sort of background, the experience exactly. they've had, where they've come from, yeah. so you have to always take that into consideration yes. as well. And in the Quran it says, um, I quote, not exactly, um, it's not enough just to believe you mm. will be tested. Yeah, that's true. I mean. Obviously, you know, there is this issue regarding girls and boys, you know, who we mm -hmm. foster. I mean, pe people tend to foster girls a bit more than boys because there's this misconception actually fostering boys, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, I think people tend to think that, that boys are, you know, going to be hassle and they're going to be out, you know, <laughs> roaming the streets mm -hmm. and, you know, causing problems for you and girls are probably a softer, softer option. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not a parent, so I don't know how true <laughs> that is. <laughs> but, um, and also, obviously, in Islam, there's the issue of, um, you know, when if you've got a child that you've adopted or fostering in your care and when they get, you know, to the age of puberty, you know, the issues around them not being your mahram and, and, and what different rules apply. So, you know, there's two different issues there. But, you know, inshallah, we should try and... So we'll clarify that. Inshallah. And, of course, our viewers can actually do a lot of research regarding that. Uh, finally, we can end it with uh, what tips would you give to someone who is considering fostering, oh. auntie? I think the number one tip I will probably give, always uh, uh, check with their family because the fostering is not just mum and dad, it's the whole family. Yeah. So, uh, and plus, you know, talk to other carers, do little uh, mm -hmm. research, and uh, I think that way they, 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 then they are in better position mm -hmm to know, you know, mm. uh, how to foster. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Fostering is not for everyone, so you have to do your research and talk yeah. to organisations yeah. that special, specialise in foster care and also re read about real-life stories. I mean, alhamdulillah, you're here, so inshallah they'll get to listen to your story. And, like, one should remember that, you know, the child is coming into your personal space, so they need a home with love and compassion and not just a roof over their head, no, isn't it? Love like they're your yeah. own. Exactly. Yes. What about your tip, <laughs> Well, I would say love them like they're your yeah. own yeah. and um, keep your intentions pure yeah. and remember why you're doing this. Yeah. Exactly. And Liz, your tip? Well, my tip would be to look to our best example, which is the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his relationship with his adopted son, Zaid. Um, and, you know, we can basically look at that and, and have that as our benchmark for how we should all, you know, strive to act in that same situation. Mm -hmm. But also we should be um, aware of Tarbiya. Yeah. Again, I'm yeah. checking my pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that's the um, kind of upbringing and educating of people mm -hmm. and, and remind ourselves of the rewards there are in, in having pious children. Oh, inshallah. 